Got another exam question for A-level chemistry. So this is enthalpy and entropy number 18. If you want to check out the other questions in the playlist, I'll put the link to the top of the screen now. So this question covers the Gibbs equation, feasibility of reactions, enthalpy profile diagram, and a born harbour cycle. Really hope you like the video, hope you find it helpful, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to subscribe. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. So part A, we've got to calculate the free energy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So I've written up there the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. I'll just explain the colour coding. So we've got to calculate delta H for the reaction. Well, we're going to use these values here to get that. And we're going to do products minus reactants because we're using formation values. And then for delta S, we're going to use the entropy values. And again, it's products minus reactants. And that will give us our delta S. And then we can work out delta G from those. So the delta H is coming out at minus 98 kilojoules per mole. And the delta S is coming out at 62.5 joules per kelvin per mole. So because we need our final answer in kilojoules per mole, we need to change this into kilojoules per kelvin per mole before we put it into the calculation. So delta G equals minus 98 minus, so T is 298 kelvin, 25 degrees C, times that um, delta S put in kilojoules per kelvin per mole. And the answer is coming out at minus 117. Next part, we're told the decomposition is feasible. Well, that's because that's negative, delta G. But it's saying, why does it not happen at 25 degrees C despite being feasible? So there's a couple of answers you could give here. You could say the activation energy is too high or the rate is too slow. Part B now, so we're going to do the enthalpy profile diagram for reaction 16.1. Now, we just calculated in part A that it was an exothermic reaction. Remember, delta H came out at minus 98 kilojoules per mole. So obviously that's going to influence the shape of the diagram. So I'll just explain this part and then we'll put the second curve in. So there's our reactants, there's our products. Exothermic, so the reactants are higher in enthalpy than the products. So the activation energy without the catalyst I'm representing with this black arrow here, upwards arrow from the enthalpy of the reactants. And the delta H is this downwards arrow here, going from reactants to products. And so all we need to do now is the second curve. So I'll do this in a different color. We'll go red. And it just needs a lower activation energy, a lower rise. So, and then we'll just put an arrow like that. And that's EC. Next part, explain why MnO2 is described as a heterogeneous catalyst for the reaction. Well, if you think about MnO2, it's a solid, whereas the reactant, the hydrogen peroxide, is a liquid. So we've got different physical states, so it's a heterogeneous catalyst. And the next part, so we've got MN3O4. It's got two different oxidation states for the manganese, but the oxidation states can't be the same as what manganese is in MnO2, which is plus 4. So it can't be plus 4. So starting point's going to be the four oxygens. They're at minus 2 oxidation state each, so that's a total of minus 8. So basically, these three Mn uh, oxidation states have to add up to plus 8. So the first option you could have, you could have two plus 1s. So that's plus 2, and then a plus 6, that gives you plus 8. Or you could have two plus 3s, that's plus 6, and then a plus 2, and that gives you plus 8 as well. So either plus 1 and plus 6, or plus 2 and plus 3. Moving on to part C, the definition for the term lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions. So moving on to the born harbour cycle now where we've got to fill in these blanks for three of the uh, levels. So if we start with this one here, so this is going to be the ionic lattice. So that's going to be a mole of MnO solid. And then if we think about, we might as well put the values in from the, the uh, enthalpy changes while we're at it. So this arrow here represents the enthalpy change of formation. 
because you're going from the elements to one mole of the substance. So that is minus 385. Moving on to this line here. So we've got to think about what's happened going from here to here. So you can see nothing's happening to the oxygen. Um, it's all happening to the manganese. So ultimately it's gone from Mn solid to Mn1 plus gas. So here we need an Mn gaseous atom. And then the rest of it is exactly the same. So half O2 gas. So what's happening in that process? That's the atomization of manganese. So that is plus 281. And the next process, Mn gas to Mn1 plus gas plus that electron, that's the first ionization energy for manganese. That's plus 717. Next arrow is going from Mn1 plus gas with one electron to Mn2 plus gas with two electrons. So that's the second ionization energy for your manganese, so it's plus 1509. And the next arrow, we're going from a half a mole of O2 gas to a mole of O gas. So that's the atomization of oxygen, so that's plus 249. Okay, so this line here, what's happening? Well, the oxygen has ultimately gone from O gas plus two electrons to O2 minus gas and no electrons. So basically, one of these electrons has gone on to form the O minus ion. So that means we need Mn2 plus gas plus O minus gas plus an electron at that level. And that is the first electron affinity of oxygen. So that's minus 141 for that. And then the up arrow, going from O minus gas uh, plus an electron to O2 minus gas, is the second electron affinity. So that's plus 798. And the long arrow down the right-hand side, that's the lattice enthalpy, gaseous ions to one mole of ionic lattice. So we'll just put X because that's what we're going to calculate. And then moving on to the calculation, I'll just quickly explain the colours. So basically, we're going to employ Hess's law here. There's two routes to go from this common start point to this common finish point. So the red route, minus 385, or the sum of all of the enthalpy changes in the blue route. So all the arrows are following the route, so that's what we've got here. And all I need to do is solve for x. So that means the lattice enthalpy comes out at minus 3798 kilojoules per mole.